Like my shirt? Thank you. We have a new bonfire campaign and it celebrates our collaboration with Bob Emser at the Art of Boat Building. He's building a tiny tender named Victoria. And we're really excited about it. Go check out his YouTube channel at the link below. What did I forget? For two weeks, they will be available. And when they're gone, they're gone. I can't decide which color I like best. The proceeds from the bonfire campaign will help accelerate our building for the next year until launch, June 2023. Thank you so much for your support in the build of Arabella. It means so much to us and we love seeing t-shirts and our swag out in the wild. So keep tagging us in your posts. Long live Victoria. I've been working on the king plank and the grubs, getting those fit and installed and fastening down the king plank with number 14 two and a quarter inch bronze screws and these get set full depth so that there's an inch of timber left below them uh, and they've got a lot of thread into the locusts so that's what we're using for the covering boards and the king planks the deck screws for the pine will be the same size screw or the same length screw just one size down they'll be number 12s instead of 14s but for the grub, I'm using these big old number 18 four inch screws. And the reason that the grub is getting, <clears throat> is getting fastened down with such monster screws is that that is what we're gonna ultimately end up caulking against. So once you know the king plank's here, we have the rest of the decking in, we're gonna caulk between that decking and this grub. And what's holding that grub is these screws down to the deck beams and the carlins below it. So we are absolutely peppering these grubs with these really big four inch screws, which go almost all the way through the deck beam below them. And that way that should lock these grubs in really well and let us cock against them and have them not move on us. So I'm gonna finish getting all of these installed. I'm using a handy dandy toilet bowl wax here as a lubricant. It helps the screws go in easier uh, and it will help them hopefully come out someday easier. And it adds some waterproofing as well. So if water happens to get in there somehow, that wax should, should keep it from going too far. And you might notice that the ones in the deck here are all counterboard and counterboard pretty deeply so that over the time as the deck gets worn down, we don't have bungs that are starting to pop out. And the decking's plenty thick to set them down pretty deep. But these ones in the grub, I'm setting just below the surface. Uh, they're not getting counterboard. And the reason for that is we're eventually gonna build up a combing uh, on top of this grub here that will form the hatch. Uh, so all of these screws are going to end up getting covered and having bedding compound put over them. So there's no point in counter boring and setting them in really deep. So we're just trying to go a little bit lower than flush. Uh, and that way we can fare things in a little bit here as we go to put in the next piece of the hatch.
With the section of King Plank done, Steve took some time to figure out his plan for the decorative bead that will run along the locust covering board. This is our smallest cove. Okay. I got two sizes bigger than that. This is that thin little pointy one. Oh, yep. And then this is the biggest bead. Gotcha. One, two, three. Okay. Um, and I have smaller beads, but I think for this application, the bigger bead and maybe even the bigger cove. I think for just a paint break, I think this is the line. This is the ticket. Because you can simplest. oil down to it. You can paint up to it. It'll give you a smooth, real crisp line. Yeah. But we, you know, I'm certainly not opposed to getting a little more decorative with it. Get fancy? Get fancy. I mean, how long did it take to to do, how long does it take to do This these? was super quick. I mean, this is in Locust, and you're removing so little material, and those cutters are so easy to sharpen and stuff. I mean, it's there's nothing to them. It's just a little piece of spring steel. I don't know why I, I would guesstimate like maybe an hour to do one side of the boat per pass like I don't think it's going to be okay. super ridiculously crazy it's certainly not hard work okay Steve didn't film the first pass with the new tool but if you watch closely in today's episode you will see that the starboard side suddenly becomes rounded over with the bead cut into it we'll show you the work on the port side in detail soon for now while some volunteers polish bronze outside Steve gets the locust stock ready for making the tow rail well, anyways, yeah, we're sanding them down. There's a lot of, uh, yeah. Well, we got the, we're starting with what? The one, the 120, going to the 220. And this thing really, this is the thing here that polishes, up, really polishes it up. When you finish with this, they really start to shine. So I don't know what grit that is, but yeah. So far, so good. What do we got? 11 of them done. 24 total. <laughs> so yeah that's about it i guess so i'm still working on getting this dark area to come to come out a little bit which this corner is the tricky part as you can see but i try to get my fingers right in there but it does come off with a lot of pressure and a good scrubbing a pretty quiet week around here this week. Sam's stint ended. He headed back up to Maine. Adam's stint ended as well because he is headed off to his freshman orientation for college down in Florida. And Ann is up in Maine doing some sailing. So right now it's just Aiden and I. And Aiden's been working on getting the decking they're so close to being done with having all the deck the decking painted and caulking bevels and 
ready for install. And I've been working on nib planks here and on tow rails. Yesterday, Casey stopped by, who we haven't seen in a little while. And Casey worked on the final fit on this nib plank on starboard. And I did the final fits and glue up of the scarves on port. So when this one's in, I can unclamp that and fit it. It's ready to go other than being fit. And the tow rail stock is all the finished thickness and close to the finish width. I gotta trim them down a little bit. So we are, we're honing in, we're getting closer. I'm really hoping that I'll be ready to be installing decking when KP gets back. And uh, we'll be able to just bang out the decking because all the prep work is pretty much done. At this point, we're gonna be down to the install and the prep. Man, the prep is really what takes the time. Super handy little marking device. I like this one a lot. It's great for marking caulking bubbles. Follow tally ho too? Yes. Yeah. I think I found both of those about the same time. Yeah, same here. Well actually I found Steve first, but then I Yeah, I don't remember which one. I think I think I found Arabella Steve first. Mm -hmm. From that, there was some tally ho reference at some point. Wow, honey. That looks gorgeous. Yeah. So Holy crap, that's beautiful. So that's about where all the tow rail brackets are going to go. Oh, wow. Tow rail will get bent around and fasten to those. Sure. Toss pipe in the center. Air leads up forward. The pipe is, you know, small, but where the valve spread will go. Okay. Wow, very pretty. Uh, so, what we need to do, if you want to step on the boat. Uh-huh. This white one needs to go to that side, and that white one needs to go to this side. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. That'll let me clean and fasten it. Nice. Exactly. Thank you. Of course, honey.
getting ready to install the nib planks, which is the first piece of actual decking. And in preparation of that, I went through with the air compressor and blew all the dust and debris and everything out really well. And now I'm running through with some varnish primer and sealing up the wood. So where it's <clears throat> really far outboard, we painted things with the anti-fouling paint so that there is some anti-fungal properties there because the spores that like to eat wood do not like copper. So that should help deter any rot. But out here, it's a lot more visible. And if there's, a say, a tiny little imperfection in the edge of the deck beam or something like that, uh, you're going to see that red paint. It's going to jump out at you. And there's not really going to be an easy way to make that fix disappear. So I'm just running through here with some of the Total Boat Varnish Primer. And I'm getting a couple coats on here so that these are sealed up well. And hopefully if the deck does leak down the road, which someday it eventually will, uh, it'll help keep these deck beams from starting to rot out because fresh water really, really is the enemy of a wooden boat. One of the nice things about this varnish primer is that it dries really quickly and you don't need to sand between the first few coats. So I can apply this quite roughly with a foam brush here and not worry about making it pretty. I'm making sure to get really in and around all the bolt heads that are countersunk or counterboard. Uh, and that way, those are definitely spots that if fresh water got in through the deck, it would collect there. So you wanna make sure that that's sealed up. And when we go to put the decking on and the nib plank, we'll fill those up with dolphinite so that they're less of a water trap. And this stuff dries super quick. So by the time I am done with starboard here, I can literally, I can go over and do port. And by the time I'm done with port, I can come back to starboard, put its second coat on. And then by the time I get back to port, that will be dry. And put the second coat on there. And by the time I'm done with that, the second coat on starboard will be dry and I can start installing. So I'm going through and filling all these counter bores from bolting the deck beams in with some dolphinite. The reason I'm using dolphinite for this is that if we have some squeeze out, it's not gonna make a gargantuan mess. So tar would be a fine substitute for this. Um, but if that does kind of squeeze out, leak out, the dolphinite will be easier to clean up and won't look as bad if you see a tiny little bit of it somewhere for some reason than the tar would. Dolphinite's definitely a lot more expensive, but this doesn't require a lot of it. I'm using, I think I'll get by with the leftover little bit that's in this can. And the other reason to use dolphinite is that down the road, if you do some deck work, you need to replace some beams for whatever reason, uh, you'll be able to easily just scrape the dolphinite out of there and drive the bolt head out where if it was epoxied in there, it's not going to uh, it's not going to come out very easy
there's uh, quite the order of operations going on here. So I want to get these tow rail brackets in or bulwark brackets in before we get the deck on because right now I can easily reach behind here and feel if there's a frame end or a deck beam or any other thing in the way for bolting these down. Where the knees are, they have to be screwed down, but most of them will be through bolted through the covering board, which is what our, uh, the ideal would be. And before I can put these brackets on, I needed to round over the corner here, and we needed to figure out a division between painting the hull and oiling the deck. And with the round over, we could tape a line, um, but we thought it would look really nice to do a decorative bead. So I got the bead all in on uh, starboard here, and then I ran through with the router and rounded it over, sanded the daylights out of it. And now from here to here is nice and smooth and fair. So we can put the rest of the deck in and we can fare the pine into the pine, uh, but we don't need to worry about the nib plank into the covering board. That's all good and smooth. And that way when we put the brackets in and we go and fare the rest of the deck, we don't end up with these high weird spots where the brackets were or having to take the brackets off. So once I got the, the nib plank in, it was running the bead and then rounding it over, sanding everything smooth and fair. And now I'm starting to install the brackets. And for the brackets, I got 12 per side. So they're going on three foot spacing at most. And that's what we got going on to here. So it's three feet to that one, three feet to that one. And the distance gets shorter at the stern, but we have a deck beam here. So I think I'm gonna move this one forward a little bit so we can through bolt it. Give me about 34. So let's bring the next one maybe to 35. We'll try to keep these spaced somewhat equally and nicely. These line up really well with the inboard edge of the bracket, just lined up flush with the uh, covering board. And then these are going in with 5 16 bolts, so, or sorry, 7? 5 16 yeah. So what I'm doing here is drilling the most inboard hole, which is also our center hole, and is our pivot hole. And then once that's located and drilled, I'm just putting down a super generous layer of shellac. And we bought the shellac flakes and the denatured alcohol and mixed them up. So this is a pretty, pretty thick shellac. I'm gonna put it on a much bigger area than what the bracket is ultimately gonna take up. By putting the shellac down first, we create a waterproof barrier, and the shellac isn't uh, oil soluble, it's alcohol soluble. So when we put the shellac down and we put the dolphinite bedding compound on top of it, it's gonna stay put and it's not gonna seep into the wood. The shellac is also gonna make cleaning up the dolphinite that spreads out um, from underneath it, the squeeze out really easy, and it won't stain the wood that we've so nicely sanded. And then the shellac will just sand off with some 220 up around the brackets and it'll be like it was never there. So a real nice generous layer for this. Uh, it's gonna make cleanup easier and we'll sand it off so you don't see it later. So most of these get bolted, but there's some like this one at the knees where you can't get back there to put the nuts on. So they'll get screwed. And what I'm doing right now is the shellac's nice and dry. One of the nice things about shellac is it dries so quick. Putting in just one bolt, one screw, and leaving it a little loose so that these can play. And I'm gonna put a batten around them and tweak them so that they all really look nice and we're not forcing any weirdness into the shape of the tow rail. And then when I'm happy with that, I'll drill for the rest of the fasteners.